Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin momentarily, so can I ask everybody who is not seated to take their seats? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jessica Jollings Gomez, and I am excited and so honored to be your MC at Acuity's flag dedication ceremony. I actually spent many years covering events like this as a television news reporter. Glad I'm not standing there in the hot sun. And the last place I worked was uh, WISN, Channel 12 in Milwaukee. And now while I occasionally get to freelance for CNN, I have my own video production business, a small business in Wisconsin, and I get to help organizations like Acuity tell their story. And what a compelling story we have here today. Today we proudly dedicate the world's tallest symbol of freedom, honoring those who have served the United States of America. We begin this morning's ceremony by recognizing some very special guests. And if you don't mind, just hold your applause until the end. Seated in the center, the Acuity Board of Directors. To your left, Brigadier General Mark Mishy, Wisconsin National Guard. State VFW Commander John Giese. City of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County leaders. Lou Gentine, Sargento Foods. J. Christopher, Christopher Farm and Gardens. And other respected local business leaders. 
Seated to your right, the teams integral to the construction of the flagpole and the Veterans Memorial. And last, but certainly not least, our very, very honored guests, military members and veterans. Would all the military members and veterans now please stand and be recognized with a big round of applause. Thank you all for being here. At this time, we'd like everyone to please rise and turn to the Acuity Building entrance. And we asked if you can, if you're able to remain standing through the Pledge of Allegiance. And I would now like to welcome State VFW Chaplain Charlene Cobb to the stage to de deliver the invocation. And following the invocation, the colors of the United States of America will be presented by the Joint Armed Forces Color Guard. Since the early days of our history, the American flag has represented freedom, something very precious and fragile in our world, and our country's ideals of liberty and justice for all. 72 years ago, the United States had just entered into World War II after Japan and Germany had declared war on us, embroiling us in another world war not to be equaled for the rest of the 20th century. The year was 1942, June of that year, the United States celebrated a poignant flag day, one in which freedom and our country were greatly in peril. 
President Roosevelt addressed the nation with one of his fireside chats. Two years later, the country again in June saw the D-Day invasion of Normandy, the largest seaborne invasion in history. President Roosevelt called on the nation to pray during his fireside chat on June 6, 1944. He said, many people have urged that I call the nation into a single day of prayer. But because the road is long and the desire is great, I ask that our people devote themselves in a continuance of prayer as we rise to each new day and again when each day is spent, let words of prayer be on our lips invoking thy help to our efforts. Now, 70 years later, it is fitting that we also gather in June to dedicate the world's tallest symbol of freedom. I would like to read a portion of the prayer President Roosevelt prayed in honor of Flag Day 1942. The spirit of man has awakened. The soul of man has gone forth. Grant us the wisdom and the vision to comprehend the greatness of man's spirit that suffers and endures so hugely for a goal beyond his own brief span. We are all of us children of earth. Grant us that simple knowledge, if our brothers are oppressed, then we are oppressed. If they hunger, we hunger. If their freedom is taken away, our freedom is not secure. Grant us a common faith that man shall know bread and peace, that he shall know justice and righteousness, freedom and security, an equal opportunity and an equal chance to do his best, not only in our own lands but throughout the world. And in that faith, let us march, march toward the clean world our hands can make. As we dedicate this flag, may we remember our history and the words President Roosevelt spoke to a nation, this nation that is again at war. Grant us victory over the tyrants who would enslave all free men and nations. Grant us faith and understanding to cherish all those who fight for freedom as if they were our brothers. Grant us brotherhood in hope and union, not only for the space of this bitter war, but for the days to come, which shall and must unite all children of earth. Let's pray. O oh God, we thank thee for the flag of our country and for all that our flag represents. We thank thee for giving victory to brave and valiant men and women who have given their last measure of strength in order that it might wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. We thank thee for giving us the ideals of faith and liberty, for preserving the sanctity of our homes and freedom of worship. Conscious of our limitations and our deep unworthiness, we pray that our flag may bind together the many elements in our own dear country and foster in our ranks a 100% Americanism. As we view this magnificent flag, a shining symbol of all that makes this nation great, may we be resolved to embrace the responsibility that living in this country brings. Make us willing at all times to uphold and defend our Constitution and our government, recognizing that freedom is not free and that it costs us all. God bless all those who participated in making this project a reality, and may we pledge to live our lives for the good of all whenever we see her streaming aloft in the clear blue sky. We ask this in your most holy name. Amen.
Now, while we wait for the flag to be secured onto the pole, I want to let you know what else you guys are about to see. As the flag ascends, members of Team Fast Tracks professional skydiving team from Middleton, Ohio, will descend from the sky to our west. With a combined total of more than 300,000 jumps, this team has performed really all over the world. Team Fast Tracks has participated in numerous commemorative events, including a 9-11 anniversary observance, descending over ground zero and landing on a nearby pier. Several years ago, Team Fast Tracks jumped onto the beaches of Normandy on the anniversary of D-Day, bringing an original D-Day paratrooper back to the drop site where he courageously landed into the battlefield on June 6, 1944. Team Fast Tracks proudly volunteers their time and services to wounded warriors. You will get to see six members of the team land here, helping us honor this special occasion. We're truly lucky to have them.
round of applause for Team Fast Tracks and the ladies and gentlemen who got that flag up there. That was a lot of work, and it's just a spectacular sight. It is now my pleasure to introduce American Idol star, BMG recording artist, and Milwaukee native Danny Gokey. Among his many accomplishments, he is the founder of Sophia's Heart, a charitable organization dedicated to helping children experiencing challenges or setbacks in their lives. Danny will be singing our national anthem. Also, American Legion Post 149 will conduct a rifle volley, and State of Wisconsin American Legion Vice Commander John Wolfe will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We now honor our nation with the national anthem. Military members should, and military veterans may, stand at attention and render a hand salute during the national anthem. Our civilian guests, please face the U.S. flag, remove your hats, and place your right hand over your hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fights or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet or the land of the free and the home of the Please join me in Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I now call upon State Senator Joe Leibaum. Well, thank you, Jessica, and good morning, everyone. It's a great honor to be with you on this beautiful day as we gather in a great American community, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, at a great American company, Acuity, to celebrate our flag and the greatness of America. I want to start by congratulating the entire Acuity team for their continued focus and success in providing quality insurance products for consumers and businesses across the nation. You are a nationally recognized company for your products, service, workplace atmosphere, and community involvement. And it's been a pleasure to work with you over the past number of years to support your continued growth here in Wisconsin, and I join you in the excitement as we see your continued investment here in Sheboygan and in Wisconsin even today. As a great American company, you recognize the importance and responsibility of giving back to your community and to your nation, 
and you do it in so many ways. But your gift of this flag, the tallest symbol of freedom in the world, along with the memorial to our veterans at its base, demonstrates your undeniable and unwavering patriotism in a big way. And it seeks to remind and inspire all of us, those of us that are blessed to live here in Sheboygan and all who pass by, of how blessed we are to be citizens of this remarkable nation and how each of us, through hard work and determination, just like the team here at Acuity, can achieve the American team. So I say thank you for this awesome gift and thanks to the servicemen, women, our veterans and their families who have served and sacrificed to protect and enhance the liberties and freedoms for which this unbelievable and awesome emblem stands. And on this beautiful day and on all days, I would ask God that he continue to allow his sun to shine upon us and the breeze of his blessings would continue to blow over this community, this state, and this great nation. And now, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce a great friend and partner of Sheboygan and of Acuity, an individual and a leader who understands and respects the greatness of America. Please join me in welcoming the governor of the great state of Wisconsin, Governor Scott Walker. Good afternoon, good to be with you. Thank you, Sheboygan. Freedom, endowed by our creator, defined by our constitution, but defended each and every day by the men and women who proudly wear the uniform of these United States. To each of them, to all those who've served, and to the families who supported them, we begin today by saying thank you. Ben, to Acuity, uh, to your board, to your management team, to all your employees, to your families, to the employees here, to everybody else from Sheboygan and Sheboygan County in this area, thank you so much for coming out. But thank you, Acuity, yet again for stepping up with what a wonderful testament, as Senator Leibo mentioned. It's great to be back. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly excited to be able to be outside this time. It was a little cooler the last time I was here. Uh, but thank you for your investment, not just in this flag and this dedication, but thank you for your commitment. Uh, to the workforce here in Wisconsin and to growing your company here. And thanks to all your, your colleagues, everybody with Acuity who makes this such a world-class company right here in Sheboygan County in the great state of Wisconsin. Particularly appreciate, though, the, uh, the sentiments here today to thank and honor those men and women who've served, particularly those who've made the ultimate sacrifice. Um, I've got a much smaller flag than the one we just saw up that I carry with me. Uh, it's a patch from one of the uh, units that's been deployed since I've been governor. And I carry it with me each day as a reminder, even as we talk today, we thank many of the veterans here, it's important to remember on a day like today that from Wisconsin, we've got three units that are still deployed. Two from the Wisconsin National Guard, one from the, uh, the, the Army Reserve. And so even as you see stories about troops being returned home from places like Afghanistan, please continue in your thoughts and your prayers in particular to remember those men and women from here and across the country that are still in harm's way whether it's in Afghanistan or in the past in Iraq or even places we've had the past two years, we've had troops from Wisconsin and even places like Kosovo and elsewhere around the world. So on a day like today when we honor our veterans, please remember those men and women who still serve in harm's way today even as we speak. But one of the things we do at deployments, and I gotta tell you, I love deployments, but I love welcome homes even more. But we, uh, we do deployments, we have a lot of red, white, and blue, nothing this big, but we have a lot of red, white, and blue up, but we also hand each of the commanding officers with the units that are being deployed, I give them a flag of the state of Wisconsin. And I'll tell you why. Some of you who are history buffs might, might know this, but the state started way back in 1848, but the flag of our great state is just barely 150 years old. And the reason for that was in the middle, in the midst of the Civil War in 1863, uh, the soldiers who were fighting from Wisconsin asked for a flag to fly along with the Stars and Stripes to remind them of their families and their loved ones back here in Wisconsin. So they gave them a blue flag with the seal of Wisconsin on it. And the reason I give them that flag is not only to remind them that there are friends and families and even others of the 5.7 million of us who don't know a single soul who's being deployed, but who are praying for them every day they're out there. That's certainly part of it, to give them almost like a blanket of comfort and prayers as we send them off in the harm's way. 
But I also give it to them because I tell them that not only are we part of a proud country, and over the weekend we celebrated Flag Day, which dates all the way back to, to uh, 1777, when the uh, First Continental Congress dedicated this flag, the Stars and Stripes, or not with all the stars on then as the one we see up there, but as the flag of the state, or excuse me, of the United States of America. But long after when we did the flag for the state of Wisconsin about 150 years ago, it's a great reminder not only of the courage of the men and women who've served from this country, but even from this state. You see, in the midst of the Civil War, we were barely a state, just over a dozen years old. We were far removed from the fighting. There are only 775,000 people in the whole state, so just a little bit bigger than Milwaukee is today. And yet, we sent more than 91,000 soldiers to fight in the Civil War. That was one out of every nine man, woman, or child. Think about that. If you look down the aisles you're sitting in and counted off by nine, that means one out of every nine of you would have been a soldier that went off to fight in the Civil War. 12,000 of them never came home. The reason I give that flag to those deploying soldiers and airmen and others from the Army and Navy and Marine Corps Reserve, as well as those who probably served in the Coast Guard, the, way, the reason we give that flag is not only a reminder of the prayers from family and loved ones and those here in Wisconsin, it's a reminder of the heritage, the tradition of courage of service members have shown from Wisconsin all the way back to the Civil War. Through World War I and World War II, in places like Korea and Vietnam more than two decades ago in the Gulf War, and now over the past almost 13 plus years in places like Iraq and Afghanistan and other places around the world. We have a proud tradition in this state of those who've had that courage. But the courage doesn't come without a cost. Not only for those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, more than 160 of whom had made that sacrifice since 9-11-2001 from right here in the state of Wisconsin, but to all those others who have served and, and maybe came home but still careless scars over the years, whether it was just a few years ago or several generations ago, to all those who've served our country, let this be a lasting monument to the thanks and celebration for the freedom that didn't come without a price. And thank you for those who continue to serve here today. With that, Vin, I'd like you to come on up. We've got a proclamation to thank you for, to name this day. As governor, you get to name things days, but this is officially Acuity Flag Dedication Day. And thanks, not only Ben, to you and your leadership, uh, but to your entire team here at Acuity. Thank you for your commitment to the state of Wisconsin. Thank you for your investment. And yet again, thank you for your civic involvement. Uh, as has been mentioned several times before, this will be a constant reminder that right here in Sheboygan, in the great state of Wisconsin, we value our freedoms and we value our veterans and service members just as much. Congratulations. Thank you, Governor Walker. America the Beautiful will now be performed by Limited Edition, a cappella group that hails from Port Washington High School. They are the 2014 Midwest Champions and International Competition Qualifiers. Across the 
wilderness. America, America, God mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in Now we know why they were the 2014 Midwest champions. If I could now have Ben Salzman, Acuity President and CEO, Sherry Murphy, Acuity Vice President, Services and Administration, join me for a very special flag presentation by Lieutenant Commander Ron Rowan, retired U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Ron Rowan is a Fond du Lac, Wisconsin native who spent 20 years in the Navy. Among his many missions and titles over the years, he was an intelligence officer who supported Operation Iraqi Freedom. When Mr. Rowan, who now lives in Nebraska, heard about this flag dedication ceremony in his home state, he was touched by the patriotism he knew would be here today. He organizes patriotic events like this, large and ones very small, in cities around Wisconsin and in other states. He says this is what he loves to do. So today, Mr. Rowan is presenting a very special flag to Ben Salzman and to Acuity. This flag has been flown at several historically significant sites on pivotal dates. On September 11th, it flew over a secure United States Strategic Command location. It was also on display at the USS Wisconsin Battleship for its 70th birthday, and at the Pentagon and the US Capitol building. And finally, in honor of the United States birthplace of National Flag Day, on National Flag Day, it was flown at Wabeca, Wisconsin. Soon, this flag will be on permanent display right here at Acuity's corporate headquarters. On behalf of Acuity, thank you, Mr. Rowan, for the flag and for your service to our country. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. On behalf of Acuity, I would like to thank the combined high school band led by, led by band directors Wade Heinen of Sheboygan South High School and Richard Tengowski of Kohler High School, Joint Armed Forces Color Guard, American Legion Post 149, State VFW Chaplain Charlene Cobb, Team Fast Tracks, Danny Goki, State American Legion Vice Commander John Wolfe, Senator Joe Leibom, Governor Scott Walker, and limited edition under the direction of Dennis Gephardt. And finally, thank you to everyone, especially our military members and our veterans for being part of this truly special event. Acuity welcomes you to personally visit the flagpole and the Veterans Memorial at this time. Please remember that the last shuttle bus leaves at 1 p.m. So enjoy your day here and God bless America.